Good afternoon, everybody. Apologies for the slightly late start. Um, it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, Mr. Leo Banta, uh, BT, as he is sometimes called, or Mr. Leo, if we're being polite, um, is the sort of inventor and driver behind EcoArc, which is an offshore uh, enclosed marine environment for growing marine biomass. Um, BT's got a very, very long career. Uh, he's worked as a volunteer national serviceman, chief engineer for the Singapore Navy for over 20 years. Uh, he has an extensive career with large Singaporean um, marine companies. And uh, the most of the thing that impresses me most of all about BT is that he's invested his own time and money into this venture. So what I'd like to do now is hand over to BT. And BT, the floor is yours, sir. All right. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Steve Peter, for inviting me over to speak in uh, this uh, Amaris uh, TA webinar series. Uh, it is an it is a, an honor because the Eco uh, is my invention. We thank God that it is also known as Noah's Eco, which is a novel offshore advanced house system. And uh, in it, uh, you will see from here. Uh, that we can have uh, two eco arc on the left and the right hand side, and uh, the leaf dog is another of my patent that we can form an uh, ecosystem for the ecotourism. I shall then move on uh, to introduce uh, the few, the opportunities going forward for the world in terms of uh, how do we uh, how do we provide food for the world for the population as we move to 2030 when the population boom to nine to ten billion people. Uh, there are two main types of uh, sea-based aquaculture system that are now available. They are the open containment, which is uh, one that is in the net cage, uh, which is very common around the world. Uh, it has it is highly reliant on the external natural ecosystem to get oxygen, to get uh, clean water. So the selection of site is super critical in order for you to get uh, good production. Where the new the new technology coming forward is closed containment. Uh, closed containment separate the fish from the full external environment. I mean, so if it's a sea environment, it has no interaction with the sea environment. Instead, with the new clean seawater for the fish to grow up. So there's a high level of control over what you do and how you farm your fish. Uh, the closed containment system uh, that we are talking about today will be the floating closed containment aquaculture system. I'll just introduce this, this as FCCS. So FCCS actually adopt the land-based recirculating aquaculture system, typically in short called RAS system. Now the RAS is proven, it is on land, typically fresh water. But if it is on land, there are people who pump seawater in it and then uh, uh, with the seawater pumping from sea back to land is, of course, a lot of high energy. Uh, in the closed containment system floating, uh, you can then also have a flow through, which I think uh, that will save a lot of energy because uh, the whole world is 70% is seawater. And uh, uh, with the lead, with the sea, with the so much surplus of water, seawater, you can easily allow it to flow through. Uh, your farming system. So FCCS come in different uh, method, different mode. Uh, they are flexible, uh, which is tarpaulin or different kind of material, or semi-flexible or full rigid. The rigid tank, you're not, that's 100% not permeable to seawater. And uh, the uh, the system that we talk about, I'll share with you, seven systems that are available in the world in this closed containment system. But the basis of the FCCS is it must have water treatment inlet and it must be able to treat the water outlet. That means the water after culturing the fish, you treat the water as well. Um, and a quick introduction to what's going on around the world. I think uh, Argentina become the first country in the world to ban the open net salmon farming because of its impact on the environment. I shall not elaborate on this, but we'll just go on to the next slide. Uh, this is to bring back to Singapore. In Singapore, Closed containment system is the answer to the rising echo threat and Singapore uh, vision of food security of 30% of our nutritional need by the year 2030. So in short, it is called a 30 by 30 goal. 
Uh, I highlight a black a, a, a box in my slide here. In 2014 and in 2015, we were hit by the red tide, which is a toxic algae bloom that kills all the fish that were in the farm from the net. So this is a one uh, one of the things that one must develop a farming system that is just not just uh, economical in its production, but must be able to withstand climatic change and uh, harmful algae bloom. The uh, four key important things for us to know in any farming system is that one must know the total cost of the infrastructure and the operational cost. So the capex cost per kilo, the operation cost per kilo, it must be commercially viable. And the availability of this infrastructure, that means whatever design that you have, uh, is, it, is it durable? Uh, are you using off-grid power or do you depend on uh, renewable energy? And what's the, what's the ease of construction and the ability to construct near the geographical uh, sea space that you have? So the logistical support is the next thing because you don't want to be off far deep in the deep in the ocean, uh, far away, 10 kilometers away, and then the logistical support, bringing feed and bringing the fish back become uh, a, a, a high logistic cost. So another power of logistical support must be, are you self-sufficient self in energy and ability to grow the fingerling rather than to transport fingerling from hatchery on land to your 10 kilometers away from the land to the sea? And are you are we able to reduce the use of uh, fossil fuel and uh, uh, rely on energy that is from the sun, solar, wind, the current, and uh, other green energy that is available? Finally, the, uh, the fourth part is sustainability. In all the stages of your production, are you able to control the waste and minimize uh, discharge of waste? And uh, at every stage, are you able to recover the waste? Finally, it's a uh, social uh, responsibility. Uh, in wherever you are, are you able to hire the local farmer with your technology to train them, to guide them to farm so that they can feed themselves? Um, as a quick introduction, the challenges that close containment uh, floating fish farm will face in, uh, as, they, as they drive to achieve food security. I mentioned sustainability. You must develop a FCCS that is not pollutive and that it must be sustainable uh, and cost effective against the current practice of the open net cage, because the open net cage is known to have very low capex, but high opex and a short uh, uh, dur durable lifespan versus a close containment that can last 10 to 15 years afloat. The cost of production I mentioned earlier, uh, in order that you develop, one must look into the uh, capital expenditure and the operational expenditure. Um, are, you, uh, are you largely depending on uh, biological uh, ecosystem for your performance, giving you oxygen, or do you need to bring in oxygen to keep your fish growing better? And the other part is uh, manpower saving in a net cage. Uh, are you subject to uh, the hazard of uh, the sea where there are predators? Uh, manpower that you need, is it going to be just a manual, unskilled manpower? I think the world is going move, moving towards automation and the AI of things. Do you, are you able to adopt this? Finally, the site selection uh, in the eco -arc, later I'll show you a Google map where we are. Uh, do you have to choose always the pristine site and say that we are we are sustainable because uh, we are able to produce a lot more, but uh, we like we leave nature to wash away because of the current and bring away the waste to the deeper ocean. Uh, I think if your site selection tells you that you have to choose a pristine site to grow, and then you've got to ask yourself, are you going to do a following and move away from your site just because of making more profit and increase your production? The other part on scalability has also got to be coupled with mobility. Uh, are you able to design your system that, uh, that can scale up uh, close to each other without having to drop a lot of uh, anchor chain and anchors to support your farming uh, 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 platform? Um, I would say that in the FCCS, one must look at the ESG model, uh, which in this case, in ACE, we practice all this. In fact, uh, uh, sustainable economic, sustainable environment, sustainable social uh, is our drive. Our mission in ACE is to be able to produce economic, sustainable, traceable produce. On the economic side of things, we want to have a higher production, or less cost, 
even less space. On the uh, sustainability side, we want to be able to reduce waste at every stage. And on the uh, um, um, uh, produce side, we want to say that we want to produce wholesome food for the people. So for the bottom of my slide here, uh, in order to achieve 30 by 30 vision for Singapore, uh, ACE would assist Singapore government achieve this uh, goal by having sustain stability, availability, and accessibility to food supply. In stability, one must ask ourselves, are you self-sufficient in the growing the fish all the way from egg with the brood stock, or depending on bringing fry from overseas? I think then this current uh, COVID-19 pandemic show very clearly that once there is a lockdown from different country, you might not, you might not be able to get the feed and the fry. On the availability, at the bottom, I put multiple units of eco -arc. Sorry, I'm not uh, trying to commercialize myself here, but I think any method, not just the eco -arc, must have the avail available food supply. To have uh, make it available, you must have higher production yield and you must be able to have uh, enhanced infrastructure of that farm. On accessibility, first of all, uh, we have to think of price that is competitive. With the sustainable produce, you may have 10, 20% up, but it is competitive if you look at the longer term for the, for the global uh, food security and safety. Um, in any farming method, one must remember that uh, we must follow or at least drive towards the SDG goal. Uh, very quickly, in any development, uh, one have to fulfill any of the 17. Uh, in, in ACE, we hope to fulfill, uh, in fact, we think we fulfill nine of the S United Nations SDG goal uh, together with the FAO of the United Nations. Uh, there's a slide here that I show on the right, on the left side. It was an article written in Asian Scientists about uh, our ACE and our system of farming. So I wrote there, sustainable, innovative technology, you either move forward with innovation to revolutionize, to have a game changer, or one will fossilize in the method of farming. The review of uh, the commercial floating closed container system that are available globally, I'll just go through a little bit quickly, but uh, forgive me if I go on too fast. Now, number First one that is a pre-line, that's an innovation, a very innovative, unique system with semi-rigid raceway concept. Uh, they, uh, they use this as a, a post nursery to grow 100 to 200,000 smog of the sea bears and the water uh, inlet comes through a pipe and the outlet goes through the particular trap on the, on the return pipe back to the sea. So they have a capacity of uh, 2,200. Of course, the, the owner uh, pre-line uh, can have a much bigger capacity as well. Uh, the salmon house is another innovative concept. It's the concept of a concrete bucket. Now, this bucket floats in the sea. It is a rigid uh, method. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the construction is steel fiber reinforced concrete uh, with styrofoam packed inside to give more buoyancy. The bottom again is where the, the waste of the fish is being pumped up through a central pipe. Uh, they have a small capacity up to 1,000 to 2,000 currently. Now, the other one is called the eco cage. The eco cage uh, have a flexible uh, cylindrical shape, uh, closed containment using a flexible wall, but the sides are supported using rigid metal bar and columns and collar so that they can hold in place. Uh, on this uh, particular method, they may have a better energy saving because the water line between what is farm and outside are almost, is almost equal. So uh, it is also very impressive that uh, they can uh, 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 have 99% of survival, survivability rate in their farming. The fourth system is called the aqua farm. The aqua farm uh, uh, technology is uh, a floating cylindrical rigid tank. Like I say, but the material they use in this case is, uh, is a GRP with steel reinforcement. Capacity of 21,000, internal diameter of 40, and total depth of the tank of the of the tank is 22. All right, and uh, and they, are, they claim to be able to withstand a higher wave height of up to two meters. Uh, this uh, fish globe is another technology that's developed in Norway. It's fully enclosed. You can see it's fully covered. Uh, that 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 uh, that's in that 
uh, because of its rigidness in a closed cage, uh, uh, it can withstand a higher uh, wave load and a higher wave height, significantly up to 2.5 meters. And uh, they can have a very big capacity of 30,000 meter cube for culturing uh, salmon. The fits closed cage container, you can see uh, it is uh, a design that has got a reverse conical at the bottom where the waste is collected and sucked up from the bottom. And the containment of volume for culture is 10,400 meter cube with the diameter uh, rather large, 160 uh, meter length, uh, sorry, 160 meter diameter. So there are four inlet pipe you can see that takes a suction at below the uh, sea lice levels so they can pump in uh, water without worry about sea lice uh, infection. The seventh method is, uh, is my innovation and my patent. Uh, currently, the patent is Singapore, Australia. I've submitted the global patent, so it's global patent pending. Uh, it is a smart farm. I have a, uh, we have a high production yield. We're 20 times more than current net cage farming. Uh, it's also highly scalable. We can put two or three equox side by side. Uh, we are currently the only farm that can benchmark uh, the, that we can. We measure the water discharge uh, every month uh, through siphonic discharge without having to pump it because the level of the tank that the fish is growing out is 1.2 meter higher than the sea level on the outside. You see the orange line. Actually, the orange line is a bookwork. The, the distance between my main deck to the sea level is only 0 0.5 meter. Currently, we have 48 meters by 28. Uh, we are building two more eco arc with six uh, tanks, six by 500 meter cube. 500 meter cube tank is 78 meter by 28. The 48 by 28 is one Olympic pool swimming size. We're able to produce 160 ton of sea bass per year. This is equivalent to two harvest cycle of 20 ton per tank per year. 40 ton per cycle, 20 ton per cycle times 2, 40 ton times 4, 160 uh, a ton of sea bass per year. Uh, because of our, uh, because of the current co uh, COVID situation last year, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't bring in uh, a fry from Malaysia. Uh, we couldn't get people to process our fish. On my upper deck now, we have a nursery and we have a post harvest uh, factory that processed the fish. So truly now we are the shortest food mileage production. At the same time, we don't have to send our fish all around to another factory to process. What you get is from egg all the way to a finished vacuum product to your table. Uh, this is an article written by Singapore Food Agency for the World Aquaculture Association, WAS. The link is there. Uh, ACE is being highlighted, the equal as the level of technology sophistication as high and productivity as higher. So we are at the aquaculture 4.0 uh, uh, concept. Uh, this gives you a good example of uh, us. Uh, uh, when I mentioned just now, uh, two of the big uh, 78 by 48 eco is coming back. We call Abundance 2 and Abundance 3. Together with Eco Spark, Eco Spark is a special purpose arc. It's a three story hatchery uh, that we hope we will produce 5 million fingerlings per year. Now, just back to the uh, global, when I say a vision is to farm local, feed global. To farm local, we must be able to grow local fish, hire local, and give fresh chew, local, fresh chew same day production to feed the people of the country and uh, to feed global is our vision is because we believe that the eco art can be deployed all over the world so the feed global with edg uh, our goal uh, we have our energy uh, required currently of 21 kilo per kilogram of fish we produce uh, but our target in three years is to reach 5.7 uh, using more green more solar energy uh, to increase the scale of uh, having to scale up uh, side by side each other within one meter together, we can have more solar energy. So this will achieve the goal number nine that will design for more resilient, innovative green energy farm. On the carbon emission per kilo, we are 8.3 uh, CO2 per emitted per kg. We hope to drop by, by, by uh, uh, we hope to uh, reduce by fourfold to 2.26 now, this is achievable using, uh, like I mentioned earlier, renewable green energy, use alternate uh, source of uh, fish feed, improve our feed conversion ratio, and to use regenerative technique 
uh, uh, to sequester carbon. And also our shortest food mile is also a carbon emission, carbon footprint saving. So that will help us achieve uh, goal 12, sustainable consumption and production. Our fish survival rate currently is 70%. Uh, we hope to reach 90. We are only one year and four months into operation. Uh, we believe that we can achieve this with the use of our probiotics, with, uh, with fine tuning of our ozonation sterilization method. And above all, throughout this process of our 70%, we have never used vaccine or anti -antibiotic, antibiotic that I've been always encouraged to use. We are zero. Uh, usage of that. So hopefully with our uh, increase in food survival, in fish survivability rate of 90%, we can achieve uh, a goal one and two to end poverty or minimize poverty and minimize hunger by bringing the equal to the underdeveloped country for them to be able to produce more to feed them the local. So on fish restocking, we are not applicable because we don't discharge uh, wild fish to the sea. In fact, uh, with this no release, we uh, we at, at this current stage now launched Ecolink. It's ecologically friendly farm, ecologically friendly uh, fingerling that are struggling to grow. Most uh, most hatchery will let them go out to the sea or curl them in different method. We convert them to uh, to uh, to a two inch uh, uh, fish cook for food called the Ecolinks. Now, uh, I will conclude now uh, uh, for this time because I think I'm already 20 minutes into timing. That's a historical announcement that I mentioned in my second slide that Argentina become the first country to reject open net salmon farming in the country. Uh, the author of uh, Not My On My Watch wrote, uh, Alexander Morton said, uh, in short, he says the damage to British Columbia is, catastro is catastrophic because of uh, what they are doing to the water currently. Uh, uh, the other gentleman, uh, Dan Sandiford, says in the GAA that the victory in Argentina it will make wave. I think it's truly now wave making around the world that a global ban on open net farming will safeguard the health of our ocean and protect the health of our children, our fu the future generation to come. I would like to conclude by saying that uh, we believe here that the near future close containment system will be the floating close containment aquaculture system. Nobody have uh, really, I mean, the, the aquaculture industry have not spoke have not spoken much about FCCS, but RAS, RAS, RAS as a technology to as a close containment technology for the future. But one has to re, one have to remember that this is. There will be competing use of the land space as the world population grow. One have to move out of the land to near coast, to the deeper sea, to offshore water. For it, it could even be fresh water in the river or the fresh water on the lake. So the benefit of FCCS globally will be land space saving. It is it is proven on high product high production yield. If there's a yield arbitrage, there's economic return. It is environmentally and ecologically friendly. And it's also easy to install and is scalable if the technology continues to, to enhance itself. And the sustainable use of nature to adopt green technology. I mentioned the green technology on the FCCS can be the wind, can be the solar, can be the current, can be the wave. So finally, it must be able to help achieve uh, the 2.0 by the year 2030, the SDG goal. Uh, here in uh, here shows you a slide of us. Uh, ACE is known now, and the government of Singapore supported us through the uh, uh, agriculture fund uh, grant. Uh, that we have the eco as a farm with the eco spark where we can pro process the fish. Uh, we believe that from farm to food. That means from farm technology to food technology. And you're adopting technology to drive the SDG goal for sustainability. So the sustainability development goal, I see from the care, the hand holding. Uh, all the seven uh, uh, goals that we talk about. I shall now uh, 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 ask that you bear with me. Uh, this is a little bit commercial, but uh, give me two minutes of a time so that I can show you uh, uh, the eco arc, uh, how it looked like, and uh, and it's a walkthrough uh, to the uh, to the eco arc. This is our logo for Ace Fish Market. Uh, we believe in uh, support giving Singapore healthy fish, so fresh fish is delivered to Singapore. To Singapore market every day. Uh, this is my logo. Change into every day. 
but it is choose fresh local produce is a logo created by Singapore agency. We are hundred percent Singapore based company. Um, you saw in the first purpose post the payment system. Uh, we claim ourselves to be the shortest as you can see in the packaging. Uh, our company we have egg, nursery the larvae, wait for the mouth, test cut, clean our fish, deliver on the same day. Therefore, uh, I'll now give you a quick tour of the food court. This is our tank number one and tank number three. Uh, this is our general manager, Joey. Yes, we can see the fish from, uh, from the glass, which is five meter below. We are now under the level. So this is our upper deck with 30 tanks. Uh, uh, we grow the, this is the fingerlings. Uh, they are 60, 60 gram. This is our post harvest facility. We clean the fish, we vacuum pack, and send the same day to the market. Use alternated ice cake. The ice cake is also used. Here shows the finger link swimming. Here shows the, the camera. In fact, I can show you that it's live. I, I tell people the reason for choosing a suit is uh, because we are raised without any blood. We think sustainability, the new opportunity, and our future sustainable. And, uh, visit us at H Street Fish Market to, to buy our fish. Uh, with this, I want to thank every one of you for listening to me. Uh, that ends my presentation. Thanks, BT. It's always nice to have someone who's fast and concise. Uh, <laughs> I'm from so the sorry. That, yes. Um, I'm going to open the floor to questions, and while everybody's formulating their questions, I just wanted to talk a little bit about it. Uh, I met BT through a common friend in Singapore, and uh, I visited his factory, uh, his, his eco arc, and there seems to be a number of parallels to what A. Uh, Mares is doing in terms of the fuel output that is required to get uh, uh, people and product to and from the facility. Uh, that currently still relies on a bit of marine diesel. So opportunities to use uh, biofuels sourced in Singapore or to go electric or to do a mix of both is one possibility. The other possibility is to supplant existing imported fuel feed with uh, black soldier fly larvae grown from Singapore's food waste, which would uh, again be another way of actually reducing the ecological footprint. So. Um, it's very interesting that uh, BT's business is very heavily energy independent, energy dependent, um, and obviously making it more sustainable by using uh, energy tricks, uh, use of offshore renewable energy is another way of um, making it a success. So on that note, I wanted to ask if anybody had any questions, or if not, I'm going to assign someone to ask a question, and that means you, Nick Lambert. Um, so has anybody got any questions they would like to ask? Please, Nick, go ahead. I thought I should put my hand up. Um, I'm not going to put my camera on, gentlemen, because I'm still in my pyjamas. But uh, <laughs> CT, that was a, a cracking presentation. And um, it's no surprise at all to see Singapore right at the leading edge of, of this sort of new generation of of aquaculture and congratulations. I do wonder, BT, whether our paths may have crossed in the past, because I spent quite a bit of time with the Singaporean Navy. Um, in right. the last 20 years. Um, but yeah, really, really impressive person. I've got so many questions. I've gone for ages. Um, ha can I ask a, a couple? First of all, have you done any comparison of your cost per kilo um, in terms of protein versus land-based um, protein production? Because the numbers are, you know, the difference of the amount of food required to get a kilo of beef versus a kilo of fish is, is absolutely huge. And, and I wonder whether you have shown a really marked difference in um, in that in that ratio, because that to me seems to be a very um, strong argument for what you're doing. And it relates particularly to the short mileage of your of your supply chain. That's the first question. And, and if, if nobody else has got questions after that, I've got uh, two or three others. Well, let's let Scott go next because he's got a pretty good idea. OK. Hi, BT. Again, I'm Scott here. Great, great presentation. Hi. Learned a lot. Love to see that you're taking the full uh, ecosystem approach on not only the energy, but the ways of being. 
Um, my question to you is about, uh, have you ever used the eco art or considered using it as a fish nursery to help restock dozens of overfished and depleted populations of, of wild fish? You know, there's so many reefs around ADB member countries which have been overfished to uh, geographic extinction for a lot of key species. And we're wondering, just thinking, could you use eco arc to help uh, restock fish in the wild? Okay. Yes. Uh, can I? Do I answer now, uh, Steve? Yeah, please uh, go ahead, BT. Sorry. All right. Uh, Turn your camera on. Is my camera on? No, I can't see your face. You can't see my face? Oh, I should be on. Okay. Can you see me now? Yeah, can, 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 can. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Nick, uh, thank you very much, Nick, for your question. Uh, uh, to answer the question on the cost per kilo uh, uh, from protein uh, C versus land, I, uh, I've not done a, a, a thorough calculation, but nonetheless, I would just take it uh, 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 equal to from land and sea by talking about fish. Yeah, so if it is uh, if it's a land based RAS fish, RAS means the re recirculation aquaculture system, and uh, taking that, uh, that I'm also growing sea bass, and with a land based uh, uh, recirculation aquaculture system, uh, if I take uh, the two paradigm to be equal that I have survival rate same as the survival rate on land. If I take both else, uh, the uh, um, the uh, species as a cycle of six months harvesting, then that left behind, leave behind one major component, which Steve rightly say, energy. I pump the energy 2.8 meter above from the sea level, and that's my highest point. With this water inlet, the water cascade down through gravity, uh, uh, 0.5, a meter difference through my moon pool. The moon pool is an offshore technology, which is, uh, I don't know how the, moon, the term come about. Maybe when the divers in the offshore look out, they can see the moon from their, from their vessel. So it's called moon pool. My moon pool is 0 0.5 meter at its lowest point and the water cascade out. Now, my energy is uh, 17 kilowatt for my 750 meter, uh, meter cube of water pumping. I heard that on land, uh, if they were to pump, they are, uh, pumping up easily eight meters, yeah. So for eight meters, it's not 2.5 times three seven. It's actually an exponential curve. So I think the energy cost to produce the per kilo protein will be easily higher than me. So I think that's the only thing I can say because I I didn't have a chance to evaluate a land based recirculation aquaculture system, because every time you look, you talk about close containment system in Vancouver in anywhere, the idea is to put RAS close containment as the benchmark. And I think that part I can't answer because I have not done a, a calculation. Uh, is that all right for you, uh, Nick? Did I, I hope I answer you, answer you. Okay. Yeah, very good. I'm, I'm, so we could go on talking about this forever, but that's a, that's yes. a very good stab and very helpful. Mm. Then for Scott, a uh, question about eco art as the fish nursery. Um, you saw just now in the video, my general manager walk up the upper deck. The upper deck is exactly 2.2 uh, .2 meter above my main deck. On the upper deck, I've got 30 tanks. In fact, by the end of today, I have 34 tanks. They are 2.5 meter by 2.5. We have six meter cube per tank. In that tank, uh, we we grow every, every 45 days, 100,000 pieces of fingerlings. And uh, our mortality for fingerlings from three grams to to sixty grams before I put down, put it down to the main tank is also close to sixty percent, which is not a good sign. But we need to improve. So, so you're right that uh, there uh, aqua can be used as a fish nursery. Uh, you saw the slide that I put eco spark. I call it the special purpose arc. Actually, I wanted to call it eco shy. Uh, shy stands for sustainable hatchery in its natural environment. The Eco Spark is a three story hatchery. Uh, we have four tanks, 30 meter cube for the brooders. And when the brooders hatch, we will bring them to the highest level, for which I call the upper deck. From upper deck, come to mezzanine deck, and they come to main deck. And in 60 days from eggs, we will be able to pump up 5 million pieces of 60 gram fingerling. And therefore, uh, we'll be the first floating hatchery in Singapore. That will be available. Uh, we can see that in October, the uh, mid October this year. So on you the see reef, them operating in parallel. 
you see yeah. operating for food production and restocking in the wild from a single facility? Like maybe a certain percentage goes to your grow out ponds for commercial sale for food consumption, but then perhaps you're letting out 10% of those fingerlings out into the wild to help repopulate a native species that are in the area? Yes, that is my that is my my vision. Uh, if you uh, if you go to the website www.nature-resources.com, I mentioned there that we want to restock the, the 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 fish population, but I was told by some conservationists, Leo, you may be bringing disease to the wild. So just hang on. So if you do, if you just Google www.nature-resources.com. That's my social impact company that I hope to be able to uh, do something like that. Uh, it's stated Thank in the you. first opening statement. So on the on the reef part of things, uh, I know that the reef to uh, 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 rig to reef is uh, now a concept out to out. I, I come in the offshore industry. I know what is uh, uh, rig to reef. Uh, the rig to reef concept actually I've also patented. Leaf dog. Leaf dog is uh, is uh, uh, is an interesting uh, patent. Uh, I can uh, remove the. Uh, I can remove the whole offshore platform on the leaf dock and bring them close to a selected area to drop the 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 the, the whole uh, platform into the sea and and turn it into a reef. I can share with you this later on the on the on the private or together with Steve uh, later on. BT, just to give you the update, we have a presentation from Blue Latitudes, which is a US some very talented ladies from the US and their team who are uh, doing a lot of work in the region on rigs to reefs and they're the actual experts on the biological and operational side of that space. And they're coming on, they're presenting, I think, Tuesday week. So that there'll be another, they're the presentation after you. Sure, happy to join you and uh, happy to send you some uh, document I put about this uh, rig to reef uh, concept. I'll send you mine. Yeah. Scott, you have another question? Uh, no, just maybe one follow-on comment about the possibility of, we have another uh, Marius consultant who's actually, um, you know, capturing the gametes in the wild, uh, the biota out in Palau. And one of the things that's missing with biota is the mobility of being able to take their, their operations and their expertise of raising over 100 uh, species of tropical fish now um, and maybe taking it on the road and being able to put it in an eco arc and move it to a location where the fish populations have been depleted, yeah. assuming that the DNA is identical in species. Yeah. Thank Nick, you very much. Yes. Nick, you're next. Thank you. Thank you. Um, BT, could you talk a little bit about um, sea states and um, and the ability to cope with high sea states? You've, you've got clearly an inshore capability, but you mentioned offshore in your presentation. Um, the sort of waters that I'm thinking about um, are those continental shelf waters where um, offshore renewable energy is really kicking off big style and the, uh, the, the round four licensing is just kicked off here in the UK, uh, which is going to make a dramatic difference in, in the waters of the North Sea, Celtic Sea and the Southwest approaches. Uh, in particular, they're bringing in floating wind. Um, and one of the interesting challenges there is, um, believe it or not, is there sufficient anchor chain available for securing floating platforms and offshore infrastructure. Um, so um, can you talk about um, whether or not this can sustain um, sea states, uh, pretty excessive sea states? Uh, mm. How far offshore do you think it might be able to go? And then could we combine um, offshore mm. renewable infrastructure mm. with the infrastructure that you're developing? Yeah, uh, thanks for asking, uh, uh, Nick. It's a very interesting uh, question. And uh, what what I did is uh, I come from the oil and gas industry from Capo. Uh, one of my design, in fact, it is, if you just Google eco patent, uh, it's written in the patent paper that uh, we can go to the high energy offshore area, wherever the distance, but we are not able to withstand typhoon or the the, uh, the cyclone and all, or the... Uh, uh, the hurricane. But if you go to sea state five uh, uh, storm, uh, be below storm, uh, we are, I have a design which is round and fully enclosed. I call it the eco UFF because it's an unmanned fish farm. Uh, they are only manned by, by the morning when the people come on the fast boat. Uh, one good example of a site that we have will be the site in Singapore called the Petroblanca. 
Petra is a rock, is a white rock, which is a disputed island over years. But now, the uh, the uh, it is uh, uh, finally concluded. It belongs to Singapore. Uh, that area has got high energy, but uh, not as high as the South China Sea during the monsoon period. I call that the crystal of the ocean because it's round. And uh, you're right to say that the uh, technology for the anchor is already there. But for the Echo UFF, we, I will use uh, a, a semi-tensioning device that will tension the bottom. So that means uh, the uh, freeboard is so low, it is uh, pulled down. And uh, on the on the four corners, I will have healing tanks so that uh, the moment it, it faced the cyclic, cyc cyc cyclical wave, uh, it prepared itself for the anti-healing operation. So that not only that it stays a bit stable, it probably go left and right, but it doesn't go this way to cause the sloshing effect. Uh, if you go to the high energy area with uh, high wind, high wave uh, of a significant height of 10, 20 meters, uh, you will achieve, you will, you will really have a problem with sloshing. You know, sloshing is actually what we call the free surface effect. Uh, there's an article that I wrote, co author with uh, 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 Professor Dr. C.M. Wang, together with his PhD student called the, uh, the Opportunities in uh, Coast Containment System. Uh, we wrote about sloshing there. So I can send you the link about this uh, if you uh, uh, through Steve later on, so they can read this article on uh, the sloshing effect for high energy offshore farming. BT, can I, sorry, Nick, I'm going to jump in. BT, can I, I get you to talk a little bit about the investment and commercial challenges? Because I'm I, what impressed me most when I met you was that you put your own money at risk to build this. And, you know, you, you know, it's not a, it's not a small amount of money you're looking to put into these facilities. Um, how, how are you seeing, are you seeing interest from people funding these technologies on a commercial scale? Are you seeing interest from governments? I know that you're having discussions with certain governments. Could you just give it a sort of an idea of where that is and what your experience has been? Because a lot of my colleagues are actually economists who are very interested in the tech, but they're also keen to do their job. Okay, I think, uh, thank you for asking, Steve. Uh, it is really, uh, I would say, uh, I've taken this journey at the age of 55, leaving a very well paid job. Uh, for only one reason, I thought that uh, uh, I could do something for humanity when I see, uh, like, uh, the, you know, the uh, uh, harmful and toxic algae bloom. Farmer, most farmers in the Asian Pacific are traditional family farmer. None of them are really industrialized other than those on land, industrialized prawn farming. But out at the coastal farm, uh, many are not. So when I first inv uh, submitted my patent, I went on the journey, uh, I submitted a patent preliminary uh, patent call, uh, uh, you have a year before you submit. Uh, then I started asking around when I put the official patent out. Um, the the challenges is because it is something new, nobody believes in uh, what I am telling. Uh, many would just say that, oh, here comes an engineer trying to promote the aquaculture. He knows nothing about it. And truly, I know nothing, but I only know how to get the fish to grow well by having clean water. So in short, uh, we I went through various uh, platform, uh, tried to raise fund. Uh, the answer was no, because uh, it's not proven. I'm at technology stage uh, five. I claim myself to be seven because I finished all my engineering, but then uh, I couldn't find farmer to adopt. Um, so uh, the opportunity came in 2019. So I just sharing with you, but please uh, I don't, uh, you know, 2019, uh, I took all my money out. My home, my house was up for unblock sale. So with the millions that I received, I walked my talk. Uh, so when I started building the first eco arc and uh, signed a contract, the uh, thank God, the uh, Singapore Food Agency came in to give me a grant. So the first eco arc now you can say is fully paid for. Uh, no mortgage, nothing. Uh, I don't owe the bank anything. Uh, but that's not the end because uh, the... Uh, 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 to, to walk the talk means I must show that commercially it's viable. And indeed, in this in this 12 months plus July now, 12 months, uh, one year and four months, uh, when uh, we had the opening ceremony on November 2019, uh, we were hit by COVID uh, lockdown in March last year. So from March to today, we are still fighting COVID. All right. Um, I didn't take it 
it's a time to cry. I'm a new technology, haven't reached the market. People don't know me. Here I'm producing fish, trying to sell and go to market. So I approached the bank. They said, look, you're a startup. We know that you are a little bit more than startup you're producing, but your sales number doesn't seem to gel, you know, show me. So that is very discouraging, uh, I would say. And most of them, uh, finally, I got, the, uh, I got the financial, I got a bank loan from the bank uh, using the green and green, uh, green plan. Uh, so-called green financing, but 90% guaranteed by Singapore government. But I'd like to say that I have security, they have securitized me from my head to my toe. Uh, as a key man policy, uh, they took one million off undertake to them under another account that I can't touch. And that account, they give me a loan to buy this key man policy. All right. And I have to put uh, 100 over 1,000 upfront. And then they create another uh, account uh, that uh, that will help me pay interest if I can't pay and uh, uh, the amount I can I will not review the amount it's not a fixed deposit I don't get interest it's there until I finish the loan I can get back the same amount of money a dollar for dollar and uh, even though it's ninety percent guaranteed and securitized by Singapore government the ten percent is only say five hundred thousand I put more than six hundred thousand on the table all right so therefore I think for a new startup whoever there take the challenge, I would tell them that if they don't have the experience like me, and if they're young and they want to put in the million, I would say find a person with deep pocket before you come in. Or else, please don't venture if it is especially something very new. Other than if you're in a high tech industry, uh, you don't make money, but people will invest money in you, like the Grab in Singapore, that, that because, oh, it is a deep technology. If you're in a bread and butter of trying to produce food to feed humanity, you can only, I can only say one thing, you have to depend on God and you have to have a very strong faith. You have to have very good greed, you know. The, the greed means uh, a G-R-I-T, you must have passion and the perseverance. If not, you can't, you can't go on. So in short, uh, this is uh, what I say, but please take it as a personal experience. It may not be the uh, same for everyone. BT, thank you very much. I have to do a bit of translation from Singapore to the international thing. Um, so first of all, Singapore dollar, this is Singapore dollars, which is 1.3 Singapore dollars to the US dollar. So it's still a lot of money. Um, he talked about on block. That doesn't mean that his house was repossessed. It actually means that everybody in his housing block decided to sell to a developer and they get a big chunk of money to sell their house so it can be redeveloped. And so a house this big can be sold to a developer, an uh, apartment block this big can be sold to a developer who makes it this big. So there's a part of Singapore's growth strategy. Um, I, I would mention um, also that, um, you know, people have got to eat. If you're in the business of feeding people, it's, uh, it's one of those sort of businesses that's re recession proof. Because, you know, you may not go to the cinema or you may not go to uh, live sporting events or to lunch, to restaurants, but you still have to eat. So um, when we talk, when we met, I mentioned to a few things and I, and I remember the look on your face, which was like, why would I do that? Um, and, and I have to point something out that you, you are very much an engineer. Yes. And as a consequence, you think like an engineer. Yes. And uh, when I talk to you about changing fuels and possibly doing some other things you, you were well oh, that's interesting but you, you listened which is very unusual for entrepreneurs so on this note i'd like to get you to listen to scott uh scott countryman for two minutes explain an idea he has scott floor's yours hi uh well that was quite an introduction um so uh, in our experience we've been using uh, um electric mineral accretion to actually promote substrate growth to grow corals. And we've noticed that the, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with cathodic protection for bridges and oil rigs and things like that. And we noticed that not only did we have um, this, you know, incredible coral growth and, and organic growth around the structures, but we had uh, higher oxygen contents and higher alkalinity in the water. And I'm wondering if you've ever used uh, a trickle of your renewable energy that you're producing there on those boats for not only cathodic protection, but perhaps even to increase the water quality um, for the fish and maybe even grow bivalves, you know, on the outside of your structures? To answer that question, uh, I may have to bring you to my slide number one, uh, that you see the ecotourism. Uh, 
I am. Uh, uh, should I just show that slide? Uh, you go ahead. Can I share? Ahead. Can I share that ahead, slide? It's, it's your presentation, mate. We're all talking about you. Uh, <laughs> okay, this slide. Uh, 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 it's uh, it's my dream that hopefully will come into reality. Uh, I will just show you. Uh, but uh, please correct me uh, and uh, guide me along. Uh, I I may be. Uh, this is uh, when you talk about the bivalve. I have the multi-trophic aquaculture system. Let me just go back to pre presentation. Mm -hmm. Bear with me for a while. Yes, uh, that's this is a slide now. Did you see that? Did you see this slide? Yes. Yes. Okay. This is. Uh, I was hoping that this will be in Sentosa Island of Singapore. Uh, on the southern part, the rich people, they call it the Sentosa Cove. Next to Sentosa Cove, there's a 400 meters of uh, granites and uh, uh, lalangs and trees that they can be cut off. Imagine the boardwalk, the, my name Levanta, that's a boardwalk. Uh, the center spine uh, is a, uh, it's this boardwalk, that means basically Sentosa development just need to give me this. Then uh, the center part of it is a leaf dock. This will have a total uh, eight legs, eight legs, four on each side. Uh, the leaf dock is my uh, patent. Uh, the leaf dock can be constructed on the in a shipyard. Uh, it's at its sail to position, put the legs down. Uh, I would explain the offshore technology of how the leg goes down, uh, and, and, and put itself in a position at the highest tide, same level to the land level. Then comes the eco arc, left and right hand side. Then come my eco seat, uh, ecologically sustainable energy and uh, environment and energy design concept. So. On the both left and right, you have fin fish from the eco arc. And then the eco seed are all the uh, the bivalve. In fact, uh, uh, somebody added, Leo, don't just put uh, don't just put uh, mussels and uh, oysters. You can grow the algae, yeah? the green algae. At the bottom, have the polycap worm. And the center, you grow prawns. So basically, this will be the multi-trophic aquaculture system that's fully closed contained, that the biosecurity is perfectly protected and the children can still play on the left and right hand side without having to pollute or having uh, send uh, uh, disease to the to the aquaculture system. So I call this uh, the eco and edu tourism site and it will be Asian continent southernmost eco tourism site where fish and the bivalves are all grown together. So uh, Scott, I can go more detail and send you more slides of this. This design is already done. Okay, so can okay, I exit so, now? So yeah. So BT, I just want to say that if you and Scott do talk, I'm not going to join because it could be several <laughs> hours long, knowing both of you and the fact that you can both prattle on. Um, so on that note, BT, I'd like to like, get Nick to ask one last question. I'm sure he has one. And then uh, Rear Admiral, could you please close the session on our behalf? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, 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 sport for choice in questions. Um, uh, have you thought about using um, uh, uh, repurposing ships' hulls, large ships' hulls? So instead of us going through the whole business of scrapping hulls, um, could we repurpose them? Um, or is, uh, uh, um, is there some way that ships in future could be built such that they could be converted relatively easily? Um, or is it just the cost of conversions would uh, write off the, um, uh, the the benefits that, that would, would make the capex too too horrendous. Okay, to answer that question, I think uh, firstly, uh, I've gotten through all this uh, thought. Uh, so the first equal is built purpose built uh, because of the tanks. The tanks that we do, you need double how because it's called Nova. Nova means it's a novel offshore advanced how system. I used to be in Keppel running the FPSO business. FPSO, I think all of us, all of you may know, some may, yeah. may not. It's a floating production, storage, and offloading. You basically you go to the site with a VLCC, uh, a tanker that's converted from an old scrap, about to be scrapped old tanker. Uh, you use the um, two, three million barrel of storage as your storage for offloading. And the top side, the main deck, we call that you do the off the refinery equipment called the top side modules. All right. Um, um, it is going to be very tough for the eco arc, especially you want to build with the system. The uh, I will I would just give a run around for everybody's interest. Is that uh, we first have to do the inlet water treatment, and in the water treatment, I use uh, ozonation. Ozonation need dwell time, 
and because of the dwell time required to move the ORP from 700 to 500, we come up with a new tank underneath the how. And from the how it comes out new water, we air lift using the offshore technology to lift water back to the tank, highly oxygenated, create a cyclonic effect, sucks out from the bottom. Now, if you were to do a conversion using a barb carrier, which I've studied on it and work out, uh, it's going to end up more expensive. Where the expensive thing is, you have uh, unnecessary steel uh, that you have because the steel are very thick. The equal is now built with steel is only uh, 8 mm thick. Normal vessels are at least one inch to half an inch, yeah, which is 12 plus. So there's already a tremendous saving using a purpose-built eco -arc. However, having said that, uh, 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 the eco spark that you saw on my uh, on my picture, the eco spark three story, I converted that from a scrap barge. Now, if you want to do eco on the barge, then your tank is above the main deck. You know, a barge is used to carry deck cargo, like carry uh, coal normally and push by a tugboat. Now, that is not energy efficient. Plus, on top of that, you got two, three thousand ton of steel. That is, you don't need them, but you have them. On my purpose view equal, I only use 600 ton of steel. All right. So, so therefore, you got to look at the, 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 the massive amount of steel that you have on the old scrap uh, barge that you probably got to do tight uh, uh, UV to check the thickness. You got to get a reclassification. My uh, equal is classed under Bureau Veritas called the Special Purpose Floating Fish Farm. Uh, 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 on the eco spark, it's a special service floating fish farm because. I use a barge, I convert the barge. The barge thickness is very good, but I built three story, all right? And then the, the what is at the bottom, normally it's just void space. I convert them into tanks. And what tank do I do? Freshwater tank. So the eco spark, I have 5,000 ton of fresh water. So it brings it back to the eco concept where the whole how now become fresh water. All right, so yes, uh, depending on what you do, uh, if you are talking about grow out, I think the cost of repurposing and re and converting them is going to be very costly. Uh, the same with FPSO now. Uh, the world biggest FPSO is built in China, purpose built. Uh, FPSO by Modec and by SBM, buying from the old how scrap value are no longer available. That means a series of the big VLCC are mostly converted to uh, uh, FPSO, or if not, they have been scrapped in the Indian yard. So I hope uh, uh, I just in quick in quick answer means uh, 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 in terms of its uh, cost for construction per kilo, uh, conversion will be more expensive, but will be higher. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, BT, I've, I've been asked to close. Um, uh, the Maris project is a, is a very exciting project uh, because it is bringing together and giving us all a chance to think about how we can combine novel, innovative uh, technologies in an environmentally sustainable way. And I, um, I've been around the blue economy now for well, all my career, but certainly for the last 10 or 15 years, and I'm often inspired. Um, um, but this was a really inspirational uh, presentation, particularly because you brought across your personal experience of being right at the leading edge of these technologies. Um, and that is in itself is a book that you, if you find a second, would be well worth reading. Um, I, I congratulate you on what you've achieved you. and you. um, and the, your personal commitment. Um, there is a statistic out there somewhere which says that um, the majority of entrepreneurs are in their, um, their late, their, their mid 50s or beyond. Um, and even though the young ones are, you know, doing incredibly well, uh, the majority sits up in um, having had experience in other industries before they went uh, into the entrepreneur world. And you are clearly an example of that. No surprises that you're in Singapore either. And um, I think your, your, your worthiness, the, the morality of what you're doing is absolutely spot on. And I just congratulate you. And um, you. I, I will talk to several people about what you've done, because I think you have a, a very, very interesting technology. Very Thank interesting. You. We will Thank have you. to go offshore. And, Thank you. Uh, you're part of the solution. Well done. And thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much, Nick, for your kind words. Thank you for your encouragement. I need a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Steve uh, Peters. You are really, really kind to invite me. It's really an honor to meet uh, all you people. And uh, we look forward to meet again when situation is up. Excellent. BT, thank you. Thanks, Nick.